so next we'll be hearing from John Vandenberg. Uh, John is the president of Wikimedia Australia. Uh, and he has been involved in open source software development uh, for quite some time. Uh, he's worked on a lot of projects that you've probably heard of, like uh, the Mozilla web browser, uh, which preceded Firefox, um, the uh, Apache Portable Runtime, OpenOffice, and Bugzilla. Um, and then in 2006, he became interested in open content and started working on Wikipedia and the sister sites uh, Wikimedia Commons, which uh, hopefully you've all encountered by now, which is the media repository that supports Wikipedia and other related projects, uh, and also Wikisource, which we've encountered a couple of times. So uh, John, I, I think is, he's also a, uh, he's a, re a researcher at the University of New England in Australia. Uh, and I think his, his work has taken him uh, closer to open educational resources as a field. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think he's going to talk to us today about uh, OER policy development in Indonesia, uh, which is something that I think is a, as far a field from anything that we've discussed so far, but I am really fascinated to hear about. Uh, and we've, we have, uh, I think, in, in many ways, we end up really with a, a heavily Western perspective uh, when we're working on Wikipedia, because a lot of the participation is from uh, the US and Australia and Great Britain on English Wikipedia. So it's, there's, there's always such a strong desire to balance that out and uh, make sure that we're representing things in a way that reflects the entire world and speaks to the entire world. So I think this will be a topic that, that really speaks to that. So take it away, John. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I do have a background in computer science. That's where I started. Um, and I've moved into research management. I'm not actually a researcher myself. Um, I'm more involved in the uh, administration of research as my day job. And uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, about 2006, I started getting involved in um, Wikipedia, Wikisource, these types of projects of uh, crowdsourcing. and um, became more interested also in the administration of these projects. Uh, so it was a very interesting mix of day and night job of uh, administrating research during the day and then going home and basically doing the exact same thing. Um, and it has brought me into the OER world. Um, and I just want to talk about uh, two things that I've been involved in. Um, it is something that's more recent in my life. Um, in 2012, started organizing a uh, language camp in Indonesia. And uh, I'll, I'll provide the URL for that page as it is now. And I'll just put that in the chat window. Um, and we decided we're going to include OER as one of our objectives um, for that session. And uh, the other stream was languages. Uh, the reason was that um, we were obviously looking at Wikimedia projects, and they have a very uh, strong uh, crossover with OER uh, resources. And we're wanting to involve universities in these projects. Um, now, I've um, recently um, become married to the, uh, um, the head of the organization, Wik uh, Wikimedia Indonesia, um, who was also the uh, funder of Creative Commons Indonesia. As a result, I knew a little bit about what they were doing over there. And one of the um, major changes that has uh, happened in uh, OER in Indonesia happened last year in 2012. Before 2012, it was actually illegal for a university to do OER. That might come as a fairly big shock to most people. Um, the concept of actually being a legality issue uh, is just not something that most of us would think was possible. Uh, the actual sharing um, or doing distance education, um, all these types of concepts were just not uh, allowed for um, the universities over there. It's quite a different environment there. They've got a lot of universities. Um, some of them are more polytechnic than what we would consider universities from um, you know, people in uh, UK, uh, US. Australia, Canada, as there is a, a difference in the level of education provided uh, in a lot of them, also a difference in the, the way they um, prov provide education. But with the uh, enormous numbers of, of uh, open education resources becoming available to them, they're starting to want to include them and use them. Um, obviously, they have to translate them. Um, so Creative Commons Indonesia um, started reform 
uh, processes for the, the laws in Indonesia. And in 2012, that was finally changed. A very minor change was really all that was required. Um, but now Creative Commons and uh, OER are now uh, legal. Um, in Australia, um, just this year, we've had our first uh, conference for Wikimedia in Higher Education. I'll also uh, provide the URL for that. It was uh, hosted at the University of Sydney, which is one of our uh, what we call sandstone universities, one of the very first universities in um, Australia. Um, and their buildings are all sandstone, which is why we call them that, as opposed to the newer universities which have been built um, uh, in more recent times, the last um, 80, 100 years. With, and they're not all sandstone as a result. Um, this conference, we're mostly looking at uh, examples of higher education. When we first proposed this conference, uh, it was one particular person at the University of Sydney who had run a uh, Wikimedia or Wikipedia in um, uh, her classroom. And she wasn't aware of anyone else doing it, didn't know what else was happening in this space in Australia. Um, by the time that the symposium was actually underway, uh, there were four or five other people at the University of Sydney that were also coming out of the woodworks saying they're doing the exact same thing, maybe in different ways, but they're also using the media. We then started looking at the legal issues um, for an Australian institution with their duty of care um, involving students on the public website where everything is uh, visible, it's very hard to get pages taken down. Um, some of the academics were talking about uh, the, the odd cases that arose and how they handled ensuring that their students, uh, the rights of their students were upheld. Um, in some cases they had to actually modify the way they are structuring their uh, courseware to ensure that the students had the option of not using a, uh, a Wikipedia or other wiki uh, on a public space and some other way of actually providing the material for assessment. So the two main um, cases where I've been involved in OER and I expect it will, uh, will grow over time. Um, the Australian Symposium was the first of many. There are um, people in other institutions now that would have run the exact same event um, at their institution, bringing more local people um, to their university and talking about uh, what they've been doing in this space. But one of the things I'd like to talk about, as uh, was mentioned, is uh, adding more information about other countries, especially uh, Asia. Um, but any country that um, isn't mentioned so far in these articles, uh, there's nearly always a um, Creative Commons organization that's um, a local organization in each country. Philippines has one, Taiwan has one. So every country in Asia, at least that I know of, and I'm sure elsewhere in the world, uh, has their own organization. And these are all active doing something. So they're wonderful resources. Uh, if you go and talk to the Creative Commons um, institution in the Philippines, no doubt they'll be able to tell you about what's happening in their country in this space, uh, about their own organization, what their own activities are, but also the activities of other uh, organizations in their country. So we see on the uh, display here that uh, South Korea is mentioned. Uh, as far as I know, that's the only one that's given any real space. Um, but all of the, uh, the countries in this area all have uh, their own activities that are uh, that are ongoing. We probably they could all have their own article, but uh, probably suitable to put uh, minor, uh, well, small paragraphs about each of these organisations in the in the main Creative Commons article. Um, another way to uh, add content is to, for example, look at the articles that have already been translated. So if we go to Open Education Resources, we'll see on the sidebar. There is a, uh, a list of, I'm just waiting for it to come up, there is a list of languages over on the left hand side. And two that uh, might stand out, they're definitely the longest names on that list, is uh, Bahasa Indonesia and um, Beso uh, Minang Kabao. The Indonesian article was created at that language camp, or actually I think it was the week prior, um, and that logo. Um, someone might want to correct me. I think that was the previous logo that was internationally used for OER. Uh, that was translated. Um, they created a new logo, and that was put up on a banner at uh, that uh, Lang Camp um, Symposium at uh, the University of Indonesia. 
Uh, the banner, which was um, two metres by two metres or something of the sort, ended up being stolen. Uh, I'm sure it's being put to good use in Indonesia somewhere. Um, we'll have to get another one made for the next conference we do there. Um, or we'll find the one that uh, we actually made and hopefully it is being uh, used effectively. Um, at the end of that article, we can see the uh, there is a reference there to the law that was actually changed. That's our second reference. Um, so if you throw this into Google Translate or similar tools, um, there's a, a good paragraph there that can be used to um, add to the um, to an English article to describe what's actually happening in Indonesia. Uh, and the same, I don't think that the PDF is going to translate. You're probably going to copy the text from the um, uh, Indonesian Wikipedia article. Anyway, um, and a similar thing can be done for um, a lot of the other languages to find out what's actually happening. Oh, that, that has come up, that's great. Um, yeah, it's a long way down, um, but I think searching for Creative Commons might bring it up, and bring up the relevant section. Um, there are a few press releases that were put out at the time as well that um, can be used as a source. And the same process. I'm, not, can be I'm done. not seeing anything, but I do. I I want to be mindful of the time here, so maybe yeah. this can be something we can follow up offline. Right. So what I um, put forward is the, the idea of actually looking at those uh, translations of the articles like Creative Commons and um, Open Education Resources to see what is actually happening in some of the, the smaller countries. Um, uh, for example, we do have a Korean translation there and a Japanese translation, um, also a Chinese one. So there are some places where um, they've got very different educational uh, frameworks that have um, got different cultures as well. So their articles will have some very interesting con uh, content that can be uh, translated into English and, uh, and added to our articles. So I'll wrap up there and um, thank you very much.